People everywhere have fallen in love with the Minions, from their googly eyes, their silly smile to their crazy hair. I'm Abby and I'm going to show you how you can make this cute little yellow guy. This is what we'll be learning today. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start by stacking and filling our cakes. I've got some six inch round Madeira cakes here. Um, Madeira is great because it's nice and heavy and solid for stacking up. Um, these are single layer Madeiras. I've got three of those and I've got one double layer um, which I've left to dome in the oven and then just neaten that dome up because it forms the top of his head really nicely. Um, I've also got some raspberry and white chocolate frosting here and some raspberry jam to fill my cake with. Um, but you could put whatever you liked in. If you did chocolate cake, you could use a peanut butter to frosting that's always really nice um, I've also got a cake dowel here which I'm going to use to insert into the center of my cake just to give it some stability um, especially if you're traveling this is really good um, it'll just keep it nice and neat and stop it from falling over in the car okay I'm going to bring my board in this one here is a I've actually got a 14 inch round board here um, I've chosen a colored board so that I don't have to ice it but you can ice your board if you wish I'm going to start, I'm going to pop a little bit of frosting on my board. I'm going to sit my cake back on my board slightly so that I can get his legs and some writing in front. I'm going to stack this straight onto the board. It's worth mentioning that I have already cleaned my board and my dowel um, just to make sure they're nice and nice and hygienic. Give that a squish. Maybe a little bit much jam. <laughs> When I put my jam on, I don't always go to the edge of my sponge just because when you stack them and you put a little bit of pressure on, that jam will all splurge out over the side and that will make it very awkward to ice and makes it a little bit less stable. Palette knife is great for doing this because it's nice and smooth. Ooh, you shouldn't be able to drag your jam off then. Keeps it nice and flat. Okay, at this point I'm going to insert my dowel. Um, I'm going to do that straight through the middle. Just give it a nice wiggle. Need quite a bit of pressure. Lovely. And then what I'll do is I'll put my next one on top of that and the same with my head. probably find the middle pops out of this one but that's okay we can just take that bit out Make 
make sure as you go you just apply a little bit of pressure to your cake just so that it's nice and sturdy. And finally, your head. Make sure you line them up. Give it a wiggle. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover my whole cake in a layer of buttercream. And then I'm going to chill it in the fridge for about an hour. Okay, now that was really nice and easy because that dowel's in the middle there, it stopped all my cakes from moving while I was icing it. Marvellous. Now I'm off to pop this in the fridge. Okay, so while the cake's in the fridge firming up the buttercream, we're going to start making our features. Um, I've got all of my features here set out so I can show you and I'll make one of each in just a moment. So we've got the eyes, the bolts, the hair and the feet. Um, I'm going to make the arms later because they need to sit on the cake and I need to position those while they're soft. I'm going to start with the eyes. I'm going to be using a dummy here to set my eyes on so that they firm up in a nice curve. Um, you can just turn your tin sideways if you don't have a dummy to hand. I'm going to make all of these out of a modelling paste. So I've got some white here, which I'm just going to need. To make a full full set of eyes you're going to need four circles I'm going to show you one so I'll do two just using some corn flour to dust my my icing with so that it doesn't stick to my board Okay, so you want your, your icing probably about two millimetres thick, not too thin because it needs to hold its shape slightly. I've got a round cutter here. This one is about 68 millimetres. So I'm going to cut out two of those. Then using a slightly smaller cutter, this one's 48 millimetres. Position it in the middle of your one of your circles. Make sure it's in the centre as best you can get it. And cut that bit out. And that's going to form the goggle, the rim to the goggles. Okay. Bring your dummy. Use your edible glue just to run around the edge. And then position your other circle just on top. Like so. Using any off cuts of your modeling paste, you can make the bolts for the eyes. These are really simple to make. You wanna roll up a small ball in your hand. And we're going to make it into a cylinder with sort of flat ends. So you want to roll it out on your board slightly. And just, just pinch the tops of it like that. Roll it. And they're going to sit sort of just on the edge of your goggle here. And take one of your cutters, your smaller one's probably best, and just make a mark diagonally across the top. Like so. I'm going to set that aside for now and we're going to paint those once they're dry. For the centre of the eye, I've got a small piece of brown modelling paste. You don't need much at all for this. 
probably about a pea-sized amount. I've got a small round metal cutter here. And that's going to form the, the coloured part of the eye. And then I've got a very, very tiny piece of black modelling paste, which I'm going to roll into a ball. And I'm going to flatten down slightly with my finger in my palm. And attach that to the centre of the eye. Then that attaches to your to your goggled eye. Like so. For the legs, you want some blue modelling paste. You can make your legs as long or as short as you like. Just make sure they're the same, otherwise he'll be wonky. Roll it out into a sausage, just on your board, until you have the required length. And using your palette knife, just neaten off one end so that it sits flush against the cake later. We'll let that bit dry. And for the foot, you'll need some more black modelling paste. Which we're going to roll into a ball. And then slightly taper into a sort of a, a sausage with a pointy end, like so. And use your, your thumb or your finger and just push down on that tapered end and pinch in the middle slightly to form his foot and attach that to the end of your foot. Okay. Lastly, we're going to make the hair. For this, you'll need to roll your modelling paste into very, very thin strips or sausages. So get it warmed up in your hand. And I roll it out as far as I can in my hand first. Then pop it on your board and use both hands because it gives you a nice even sausage. Roll it out as far as you can go. Now you can make your hair as long, as short or as curly as you like. You can even go without hair at all if you wanted. Use your palette knife to cut it off. And then form it to whichever shape you like. I'm going to go for a curly wiggly one here. And then leave that to one side to dry completely. You want to make sure that one end is fairly straight so that when you can put them in the cake, they sit up nice and straight. Once your eyes are dry, you can begin painting them. So I'm going to bring my eye back in and my bolt for this bit. And I've got a paint palette here. This has got some silver. Um, this is a silver dust. This is a Roll Chem one. It's a really good brand. There are loads out there. And I'm going to make it into a paint with some rejuvenator spirit. You could also use clear alcohol for this.
Okay, for the bolt, I'm going to paint three quarters of this. I'm going to leave the piece that touches the bottom of the cake um, clear so that if you put it on and you decide you need to move it, you're not going to leave a sort of a, a sticky silver mark behind. This is a little bit fiddly, this bit. Okay, leave that to one side to dry. Now for your eye, we're going to paint the, the rim around the edge. We're gonna leave the center white because that's his actual eye, but we're gonna paint the bit around the edge for the goggles. Watch where you're putting your fingers while you're doing this because if you start to touch your, your silver paint, it'll end up on your fingers and you don't want that on the, on the eye itself. Okay, so I'm going to set that all to one side to finish drying and I think we're almost ready to cover our cake. So my cake's out the fridge and it's nice and firm now. I'm just going to skim over the cake with a little bit more buttercream just to get rid of any tiny little bumps or lumps and it also gives the sugar paste something nice to sort of stick to basically. You only need a very small amount for this. It's important that this is nice and smooth as it will make your sugar paste go on so much easier and you won't have to work as hard to get any lumps and bumps out. Okay, let's move my cake to one side and I'm going to bring in my sugar paste. Okay, so I've got about a kilo of sugar paste here. we've already kneaded. Just going to give it one final okay dust your surface with a little bit of icing sugar Now I've roughly measured my cake against my rolling pin so that I can see that my icing needs to be no wider than my rolling pin. If you roll it out too wide it does stretch and it will become very difficult to cover your cake. Keep turning your sugar paste and add a little more icing sugar if you needed. You don't want this to stick to your board. Okay, so I think we're almost there now. I'm going to use my rolling pin to roll my icing sugar icing onto and I'm going to bring my cake in give it a wiggle I'm going to roll up and over my cake just want to Move it around. Oop. This is where you need your icing smoother, just to flatten the top out. And use your hands. We're going to pull out the pleats on the cake. And just gently rub them. Take your time over this.
the heat from your hand will manipulate the sugar paste. And we're just working the sugar paste down the cake, removing any of those creases and folds. Okay, now once you've worked it down to the bottom, use your smoother. To iron out any creases or bumps. You can use your other hand at the same time. I want to get as smooth a finish as possible on this. As you can see, I've got a little bit of a crease in here, a little crack. If you use the palm of your hand and just work it round without putting too much pressure on the cake, that should start to smooth out because the heat from your hand will warm that sugar paste up slightly. Just be careful you don't sort of squish the side of your cake while you're doing this. Okay, now once your sugar paste is worked down to the bottom, we can cut away any excess with a palette knife. Leave a little bit for now because as you start to smooth it, um, it'll start to creep up a little bit. It's always best to not cut away enough and then cut away more than cut away too much. What I'm doing here is I'm just using the straight edge of my smoother to sort of push the sugar paste down at the bottom so that when I use my palette knife to cut it off, I'm cutting off as thin as piece as possible so that it leaves a nice sharp crisp edge on the bottom of the cake here. run your palette knife around Okay, now just work at that until you're happy with it. Once you're happy with it, we're going to pop it to one side so that we can let it set and then we can begin to put our features on. Right, now for his dungarees, we're going to need some blue sugar paste. I've rolled this out and kneaded it into a nice ball. I'm just going to dust my surface. 
Now I tend to do this bit freehand because it depends on how tall your minion is as to how, how high his dungarees need to sit and how wide he needs to sit. Um, but you can draw yourself some templates if you like. Um, we're going to make two shapes for his, um, for his dungarees. One is going to be the pouch that sits across the front and the other is the bit that goes round the side. Okay, so roll your sugar paste out. You want this fairly thin, otherwise it starts to make your the bottom of your cake look quite chunky. Okay, now you're going to need two of each piece. So you're going to need a piece that matches for the front and the back, and then you're going to need two matching side pieces. I'm going to start with the pieces that sit along the front. And I've got a couple of tools here that I'm going to use. This one here is just a cutting wheel. Um, it's just a little wheel that I can slide along my sugar paste and it cuts nicely. Um, so for the front, I'm going to make kind of a a sort of a trapeze shape so the sides are going to come in slightly and we're going to have a top and then the bottom will be slightly wider. I'm going to do this back to front so that you can see it a bit better on the video. So I'm going to cut a long strip like so. Let's move that piece out of the way. I'm going to do each of my pieces one at a time. And then use your tool and work out roughly how high you want it to sit on your cake. So this is going to be the top of my dungarees and this is going to be the bottom. top needs to be narrower than the bottom and in a slight curve cut okay let's move that to one side I'm going to bring my cake in and I'm going to sit this on my cake just check that it looks looks right before we start to to carry on and continue with my right I can see from that that it is a little bit too tall so I'm going to trim the bottom down a bit neaten up the edge there Going to attach it using some glue. Find the centre of your cake. Okay. So as you can see, I found the front of my cake and I've just attached my little dungarees to the front. And I'm going to do exactly the same for the back now. I'm also at this point going to cut the strips around the side here. They just need to sit just around the side of your dungarees here, about sort of half the way up.
Don't worry about the ends at the moment because we are going to have to trim that off when we put it on the cake anyway. So let's bring my cake in. Okay, spin your cake round to find the back of it this time. You want to make sure you line up the front and back nice and straight. Otherwise, it'll end up with lopsided trousers. And for your strips, pop a bit of glue on. It's important to put your glue sort of where the, the f it meets the front of your dungarees. Take your length and lay it around your cake just gently press it and you'll start to see where the edge of the front panel is and just use your knife to cut down there so we can take that piece of sugar paste out. Same again on the back. And then repeat the same on the opposite side. just going to use a quilting tool here um, this is from a designer wheel and this just gives a little stitch effect which is brilliant for anything with clothing um, it also works really good for teddy bears now I'm just going to run that stitch along the edge of the dungarees and down following any sort of lines of the edge of the sugar paste that you can. Okay. I think I've run that all the way around. I'm just going to take a small piece of my blue sugar paste because I'm just now going to make a pocket to sit on the front. Okay, now for this bit, use your tool, your cutting tool. And we're going to cut a straight line. And we're going to turn the bottom into sort of a U shape. So you want to come down at the sides and curve at the bottom. So down and curve, just like so. Just check it against your cake, make mine a little bit shorter. Find the center. And again, use your stitching tool.
Okay, later, once that's dried, I'll add the little logo to the front, but it needs to be completely dry before you write on that with any edible pens. Now that our minion's got a body, we can start adding our limbs. So I'm going to add his legs on, and then I'm going to show you how to make the arms. Just going to pop a little bit of glue on my body. Just press on his legs. Like so. Nice and easy, because they're already dry. We can just pop those on. For the arms, this is one I've just made earlier. So it has dried a little, but I'm going to show you how to make one now. And we're going to attach these down the side of the body. Sorry, I've got the cake away from you. Down the side of the body here. For that, you're going to need some yellow modelling paste. And we're going to roll this into a long sausage. That's better. Cut away one end. With the other end, the one that's going to attach the body, I'm going to cut it at a diagonal so that it sits nice and smooth and flush against the edge of the body. Just using my cutting wheel to do that. You can use a palette knife if it's easier. Okay. So now to add the hands, I've got here a ball of black modeling paste. I've just rolled that in my hands so it's nice and round. I'm going to pop it on my board and I'm just going to use the palm of my hand just to flatten that. You don't want to completely squish it, it needs to be sort of slightly rounded. Then use a scalpel, be careful because these are sharp. Cut straight into the top like so, and then we're going to take out two sort of small chunks, like little wedges of cheese. And we're going to shape those into the fingers. Play around with it. You may decide you want to make your fingers a little bit deeper. In fact, I'm going to do that. Just like so. You want to fatten them out a bit so they look like fingers. Just like that. And take a little bit of your excess black paste and roll it into a really fine sausage because we're going to use that to make the cuff. So bring in your hand, your arm, attach your hand to the end of your arm and then wrap your cuff around the join. Actually that keeps it really nice and neat as well. Just trim off the excess. Like so. And decide where you want your arms to sit. Just be careful, obviously, because they are still soft at this point. I'm going to have mine sort of sat down beside my body. So work out where your edible glue needs to go. And then attach the arms to the side of the body.
you may need to support these for a little while while they're dry so I'm just going to use a little ball of excess sugar paste here to do that make sure you match your arms up Okay, so now those are attached, we're ready to start adding our features. Okay, for his smile, I'm going to be using this uh, flower and leaf shaping tool. Um, I'm going to use the thin end of it. It's got this nice little curved point to it with a little V on the back almost. And that's brilliant for shaping and making the mouth. I'm going to do like a little sideways smile on my minion, but you can do whichever smile you like. You could do a big mouth, you could do a little tiny mouth, you could do a really great big smile. So I'm just going to, I'm going to sit him, his smile just sits above his dungarees. I'm just going to mark that on the cake. Like so. What's great about this tool is, although it's got that little V on the back, it's not harsh enough to break the sugar paste, so it just indents it nicely. And that's what you want. Okay. Now that his smile and his arms are on, what I'll do is I'm going to add some straps to finish off the dungarees. So I've rolled out some blue sugar paste for my straps, and I'm just going to cut those using my cutting wheel. You'll need two of these, one for either side of his body. Make sure when you cut your sugar paste and you roll it that you've got enough to reach from one, one side of his dungarees to the other. Okay. Take away any excess. You want his straps just to sit above the, the top of his arms, sort of where his shoulders would be. Same again on the other side. I'm going to add a little button to the front of his dungarees in a moment. Let's trim that down. I'm going to get my stitching tool out again and like we did with the bottom and the body of his dungarees we're just going to run that stitch along those straps so it all ties in together For the button on the front of his dungarees, again, take a very small piece of black sugar paste like we did earlier for the, the centre of his eye. Roll it into a little ball. Flatten it down slightly in your hand. Use a little bit of edible glue again. Just pop a button on the front there.
like so. Okay, so next we're going to move on to attaching his eyes and his hair. To attach the hair to the head, I'm going to use the veining tool we used earlier. Um, what we need to do is we need to just make some little indentations in the top of the head, pop a bit of glue in and then insert the hair. So we'll pop it in, give it a wiggle. Once these are dry, they're nice and stiff and they go quite hard. So you can play around with them a bit if you like. Work out where you want to put them. Simple as that. Now I'm going to attach a little black strap around his head now to form part of his goggles. To do that, I've got my black modelling paste out. I'm going to roll a long strip, a bit like we did for the, the shoulder straps on the dungarees. This one you need to make sure it reaches all the way round his head. You want this fairly thin so that it sticks to the head and doesn't sort of fall off. The more weight, the more chance it has of falling off. You want to kind of line this up sort of so that it's going to sit in the middle of where your goggles are going to start. So run your glue around your head, keeping a sort of as level as you can. Now you don't have to worry too much about the little bit at the front because your goggles are going to sit there. So you want to start just in on the side here. And run that around your head. Like so. Okay, now for the eyes, I'm going to attach these using royal icing because they are going to be quite heavy. You need this to set really firm and I don't think the edible glue is going to be quite strong enough. So, find your eyes. Make sure you've got them the right way around so they're going to sit flush on your cake. Turn it over. Just be careful with your fingers because this will still leave silver marks everywhere at the moment. I'm going to attach the bolts to the side of his glasses now. To do that, I'm going to use a little bit of royal icing. Like 
Okay. So now that all of his features are on, I'm just going to add the little logo to his pocket. To do that, I'm using an edible pen. This one's got two ends, as you can see. I'm going to use the, the, the sort of the felt tippy kind of end, the finer, softer end. Okay. <coughs> and there you have it. That's your minion. Now, I've just cut out some letters so that I can put a message or a name on my board here. So I can add those. To do that, I've just used these really lovely, easy, push easy plunger cutters. Pop them out, and you can just attach those with a little bit of edible glue. And now that you've mastered this minion, cupcakes are going to be a doddle. Here are some I did earlier. I've used the same technique as I have for his eyes on my big minion. And I've just drawn their mouths on with edible pen. And they make a great addition to your cake. Good luck and thank you for watching.